Uh, well, greetings to you uh, from ex-Catholics. A lot to talk about today. Uh, Patrick and I are going to talk about evolution. Uh, the Church of England have once again apostatized. Uh, just when you thought they couldn't get any worse, they put an apology out uh, to uh, Charles Darwin. Uh, they have once again distanced themselves from the Word of God, and uh, we'll look at the Genesis account in a moment. Uh, but what were your thoughts on the latest well, apostasy I, from the CV? Uh, very surprised. Uh, the Church of England issued a statement apolo apologising to Darwin for the bad press that they gave me. What was it, 120 years ago, something like that? They said some very unkind words. Well, they did then, they don't now, but they, they wanted to apologise for that. I think it's all part of this ecumenical mood at the moment. You've got the Pope apologising what happened to the Jews, and uh, one of the American Carters apologised what happened to the Red Indians, so it's probably part of all of it. But um, it just shows me that the Church of England, under Rowan Williams' leadership, are not creationists. Am I right, do you think? The Church of England, uh, in recent years, certainly after uh, post-Vatican II days, have uh, moved into theistic evolution. I'm going to spend a little bit of time looking at the book of Genesis now and offering you my thoughts on how to understand uh, the creation account. And uh, we'll show you some verses from the New Testament which support what the Old Testament stood for. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, we have the only credible account of how the world began. And uh, we believe that Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Indeed, the Lord Jesus Christ said that Moses was the author of this book. And it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the day. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, in 1903, uh, a scientist by the name of Herbert Spencer uh, came up with his view that the universe uh, came down to five components. And it was time, force, action, space, and matter. Okay? Time, force, action, space and matter. Now, Herbert uh, Spencer wasn't a Christian. He wasn't even a theist. But his hypothesis uh, is found echoed in the scripture. And I'm going to show you how it works. In the beginning, time, God, force, created action, the heaven, space, and the earth, matter. Isn't it amazing that Mr. Spencer, over a hundred years ago, came up with the five-point component to how the universe began and it's echoed in the book of Genesis. We also find very clearly in Genesis 1, 5, there is an evening and a morning, day one. Verse 8, an evening and a morning, second day. Verse 13, an evening and a morning, the third day. Verse 19, an evening and a morning, the fourth day. Verse 23, an evening and a morning, the fifth day. And of course, verse 31, an evening and a morning, which makes the sixth day. Now, we hold to a young earth. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians, a lot of saved people, do not agree with this position. The late Walter Martin said that the earth wasn't created in six literal days, and he used uh, verse 4 to show it. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day, singular, that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, the day in that context, is covering a period of time. Uh, Paul says in Acts 17 that God has chosen a day where he will judge the world. And we, we understand that word day to be an extended period of time. But scripture with scripture, you cannot get away from the fact that Moses clearly lays out six literal days. And on the seventh day he rests, which of course is a picture of the Sabbath, which of course is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, also, if you look at Genesis 2, verse 5, to show that it has to be a young earth, it says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now, if these are long periods of time, which people like Hugh Ross and others hold to, all the plants that the Lord had put in the earth would have died. Okay, you need to be... Uh, watering over a literal period of time, otherwise everything dies out. Uh, also, if you look at uh, Matthew 19, verse 4, Jesus Christ affirms the creation account. He takes you straight back to this account and says that God made them at the beginning, 
referring to, of course, Adam and Eve. And in the book of Hebrews, the writer says that God created the worlds, which we accept to be the universe, the many uh, solar systems, not just planet Earth. Uh, so there are my views briefly on creationism. And I'll just take you back to Genesis chapter 1 briefly. Uh, and it says, uh, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep, of course, the Holy Spirit. Uh, verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good. Of course, Jesus is a type of the light. Or light is a type of Christ, I should say. And God divided the light from the darkness, which, of course, is the devil. Light is Christ. Satan is, of course, darkness. The day was called... Sorry, and God called the light day, the Son of God. And the darkness he called night, picture of the devil. The evening and morning were the first day. So that's my uh, brief... Uh, presentation on Genesis with Patrick. Also, before we sign off, uh, interesting to make out that uh, Charles Darwin was a Freemason, mm. along with his father. He went to Cambridge University, he got a BA in theology, but according to a lot of writers, never read his Bible once. <laughs> he also consulted with mediums and clairvoyance. And uh, one other point, he married his uh, cousin, they had ten children, and sadly, uh, at least three of them died yeah. in uh, their yeah. infancy due yeah. to the gene pool being contaminated. Not surprised about the Church of England. It does bring them close to the Roman Catholic Church, who do support Darwin. And we're going to be talking a few weeks' time about Pope Pius XII, yeah. Eugene Pacelli. And what did he say about Genesis? Well, he said about Genesis that it was a naive book written for simple-minded people. Primitive people. Primitive people. It's rather like the Prime Minister saying, I don't go to council estates because it's full of drug addicts and uh, hippies and so forth. I think Pius, Pius XII needed a good spin doctor. But we've got his 50th anniversary coming up on October the 9th, and we're going to say a few words about so-called Hitler's Pope. Well, that's all I want to say at the beginning there. I'll just take you back to Genesis, the first four words of Genesis, in the beginning, God. That's all you need to know. In the beginning, God. All this creation, all this uh, Darwinism will f gradually fade away when Christ returns. But until then, thank you and Maranatha. Maranatha.